Today I'm going to show you how to connect a PHP form to a database. And I have a form up and running. Uh, right now in XAMPP I've got just Apache running. I don't have my database server running just yet. I'm going to show you what how this form works. This is a pretty standard self-referential sticky form. So I can fill in my information here and I'm Sean at school.com whatever and I'm going to leave this last one blank so that you can see that the register or that the validation is working and I'll show you the code for that in a second and if I get everything working it's supposed to go to thanks.html I don't actually have that but it passes validation and it goes to this non-existent page I can make that later here's what the code looks like in Dreamweaver I do want to take you on a very quick tour of it first off if the post exists, which is if they've hit the submit button, then I'm going to grab everything that they uh, submitted, that, they, that the user typed in. I'm going to set a bunch of flags all to false. And if each one of those items that they typed in meets a minimum number of characters, then I'll set each flag to true. And then at the end, if all of the flags are true, then I'm going to send them over to the thanks.html page. Now there's one section that I've got right here, insert into database. This is where we're going to create the code that's going to save all, everything that the user types in and put it in the database. So let me show you what that process kind of looks like. Under XAMPP, the first thing that you've got to do is start MySQL, otherwise none of this works. Then you're going to open up a new tab and you're going to go to a website through localhost but it's a very specialized one called PHP My Admin. And I have a couple of these test databases set up that I'm going to show you here in a second. But each one of these entries is a database. And you can access any of these. Most of these come with XAMPP. That are, some of them are dummy ones set up with useless information. Some of them are actually crucial to the, the entire database server running. But this test one, I want to show you this. The test database has a table, and this is very common. This is exactly how databases work. Whatever your, your database is a container, and it can have any number of tables. Let me show you information schema. This one comes with uh, XAMPP. Every one of these is a table. So those are complicated tables. Let me show you a simple one, this register one. Uh, if you click the browse across the top of the page, you're going to see the data that's been input in here. And I've got some test data. It's actually the same thing several times. Um, you can actually uh, change this information. Let's say I'm actually only 50 in this one. And so the thing that you're trying to get people to do on your website is fill out a form that looks a lot nicer than trying to fill out this thing. Um, and you also don't want people to see other people's information. You can see everything through this interface. Now, notice the column names. This is actually really important. You have to name these. And what I recommend that you do is you name them the exact same thing as the form from which they come. So this is my input for register first name. I'll show you. In Dreamweaver, if I click on this and bring up my properties, the name for it is register underscore first name. This can be anything, but to keep yourself sane, I highly recommend that you name the columns the exact same thing as what your uh, form elements are. So there's a last name, an email, and an age. Now notice there's, there's also an ID one. You, this is a uh, feature of databases that's considered universal you always have to have an identification column. So even though I'm only taking four pieces of info, I have to have a fifth column when I create this. So let me create a new one and show you the process from the start. From the home page of PHP My Admin, go to the Databases tab and you can create a new database. This one is going to be, uh, it's going to have to be test three. And I'll create this. Test 3 shows up here, and it's got nothing in it. It's essentially a blank file. I need to create a table on it. I'm going to call this one register. And you always need to collect at least one more column than what it is that you're collecting. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I've got to have 5 columns because I've got to have that ID one. 
Now in this one, on this screen, I get the I have to tell the computer what type of information is going to be collected in each one of those fields. So my very first one is register underscore first name. Now what type of data is going to go in it? In this drop down, there's all these different types. Some of them are really weird. Like you can do spatial geometry. Um, those are actually three dimensional points. Um, but the ones that you're most commonly going to work with are integers or ints, varchars, which are variable characters, which is, as you can see, a, a character that's basically one to 255 characters long. Text is a huge amount of text, about basically up to two gigabytes of, of text. Um, you can have dates. There's other weird ones like a tiny integer, a small integer. These are uh, numbers of different sizes, and the computer just needs to know how much room to allocate for the different um, size numbers. If you're going to do anything with a decimal, you, decimal and float are kind of the same thing. Um, double is a decimal with a really big decimal point. Um, and there's other things in here too. Some of, most of these we won't end up using. Um, but my first name, it's just a string of characters, whatever that's going to be. So that should fall under varchar. Now, what's the maximum number of characters that we're going to have for first name? Well, 20 is probably good. So now I'm going to do the rest of them. Register underscore last name. I'm going to go with the exact same properties for this register underscore email. That one's also a varchar, but emails can be a lot longer than first and last names. 60 is what I found works best for that. The last one is register underscore age. And not that you ask this too often on a registration form, but I just wanted to show you how to use an integer properly. So integer is just a whole number. And ages, I suppose we could have somebody who was over 100 registering on our site. So that means our, the length of it should be three. That would allow us to have up the numbers uh, one through 999, since that has three characters in it. The last one that you absolutely have to have for any table that you create is called a primary key. And it's the ID column. It's the serial number. Um, every time someone fills out our form, the computer is going to label the first person who fills it out, they're going to get number one. The tenth person who fills it out is going to get number ten. There's two things, two settings that you need to apply to this. Um, oh, we do need to set a length. Uh, if we do four, that means I could have 9,999 entries before it uh, actually stopped taking entries. Over here, there's two options that we need. This, on this last one, I need to set this to the index to primary to let the computer know that this is the identification number column. And then AI is auto increment. And this is what's going to, the computer is going to automatically handle numbering them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as the registrations uh, fill up. And that's pretty much all I need to do for this. I'm going to save this. And now I've got a register table. And I can look at the structure for right now. The columns are actually listed in row format. So think of it that everything you see here is going to get flipped 90 degrees clockwise when we actually go to putting information in. So let me show you what information, how you insert information, the, the sort of uh, through PHP my admin. If I insert this, it gives me all the columns that I just created and asks what value should I put in there. So I'm going to put my name. I'm Sean Mar. Here's my made up email address. And I am 101 years old. And you can fill out, you can add as many entries as you like. I'm just going to enter one for the moment. And it lets me know when you get this little green box, it, it did it properly. If this was red, it would give me some kind of error message saying that I probably did something wrong. Now if I click on Browse, this is going to start showing me the data that's been entered. And as you can see, under my register ID, the computer automatically put in number one. So as we get the form to, to connect and fill in the, this database for us, the computer is going to handle these entries. Now, how do we do that? Well, we have to add some information back into the code of this form. 
and I actually have it set aside right here. Normally in a sticky form um, or in a self-referential form, if everything works out, you send them to another page. But before you do that, you need to record what it was that the user typed in. So here's where we start having to add the information for that. There's a couple of lines of code that we need to worry about, and I'm actually going to write out the steps for us so that you know what it is we're doing. The first thing that we need to do is connect to the database server. The second thing that we'll do is select a specific database on the server. The third thing that we'll do is create and send an SQL command to the database. The last thing that we need to do is close the database connection. And there's PHP commands for all of this. So let's start at the beginning. Connecting to a database. This is actually fairly simple. We need to set up a variable. And you often see it called database connection DBC or connection or something simple like that. Um, I want this to be fairly short, so just DBC is fine. You can come up with anything that you like. All of the commands that are used to interact with the database start with my SQL and an underscore. Now, this is the old way of doing things. There is a new and improved way called MySQLI. It literally stands for improved. There were some bugs in the old way of doing things, and this is the preferred method now. And virtually every MySQL underscore command, there is the exact same thing as MySQLI. You should only use one or the other. If you're, use, if you're not using the I, don't use it anywhere. Um, they don't play well with each other. So the first one is MySQLI connect. And what we need are three pieces of information. I need to know the address of the database. I need to know the username and the password. Now when you're developing on your own personal computer like this, the default address is localhost, um, especially on Xamp. That's going to work just fine. Now, unless you specifically change anything in PHP MyAdmin, the default username is root, and then there actually is no password, which is not safe and secure at all. But if you're just starting out with development, just go with it. This is what it is. And if you're using any other tutorial, they may or may not go through and show you what their username and password is. This is what you'll need. Now, we can actually do some nice things. What if, for some reason, this doesn't work? Well, what would be nice, for example, if I may spell it, what would be nice is if I could get some sort of error message. Trigger underscore error. My SQLI underscore error. E underscore user underscore error. What this does is if it can't connect, then it's going to uh, print on the screen a bunch of errors that are going to kind of tell us where the um, problem could be. So I have this intentionally misspelled. So I'm going to save this file. And I'm going to run this page and see, oh, I do have to have it correct. So if I register this, it's giving me errors, which is good. It cannot get into no such host is known, which makes sense since I misspelled the host name. So let me put this back to the way it was, local host. This should work. Now, the problem is if it works, it's just going to go right to this header. So let me do this. Let me comment out the, the redirect and just do echo success just to see if it works I'll delete that line in, in a, just a minute so now let me go back let me try it again success it is actually connecting to the database server now that's not all now that we're we've successfully connected to the server I need to tell the computer which of the different databases I want to use and this is my list, all of these. I need to connect to test3. So that command is my SQLI underscore select underscore DB. 
for database. This command needs two things. It needs to know which connection it's supposed to use and then the name of the database. So I need to use the DBC database connection and then I need to connect to database test 3. And again, I'm going to put an echo success on this. So let's see if I register this. I still get success. So it was apparently able to do it. Let me try one that doesn't work. I didn't have a test 4. Oh, it's probably giving me, it's probably going through because I don't have an or statement on this. I can tell it to have that same error if needs be. Good. It doesn't like my SQLI error. Get rid of success here. Put this back the way it was. So that's supposed to be test three. So all of that is just knocking on the door to get in. The next thing that we need to do is send a command, uh, build an SQL command and send it to the database. Now this is primarily done with nothing more than a string. So I'm going to create a variable and use it to save uh, a nice little string of, of SQL commands. Well, the way this works is what I want to do is insert the information that comes from the uh, the, from the form. In this instance I can insert into the name of the database, or I'm sorry, the name of the table which was register. I'm already connected to the right database. I then need to list off the order of the form elements, I'm sorry, the order of the columns. So my first one was register underscore underscore first name. My second was regis register underscore last name register underscore email and register underscore age. Just as a side note, these do not have to be in all caps. That is not required of the language, but certain uh, regular e SQL commands are commonly written as all caps to distinguish them from the things that you've made up as parts of your database, like the names and the column names and things like that. So. I'm telling the computer that I want to insert some information into the register table. I want to put information into these four columns. Then I need to tell, tell it what values actually go in those columns. Now in this instance, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to put four sets of colon, or of, what are those, quotes, quote marks. And what I want to do is go and grab the variables from way up here. This is where I define the variables. If in the post it can find register first name, then I create a variable called register first name and throw the post stuff in there. These are the variables that I want to use down here in my SQL string. So in register first name column, I'm going to put in the variable register first name. And then I'm going to make this a little bit easier on myself. I'm going to do register last name, register email, and register age. If you're not that familiar with variables, the important thing here is that these dollar signs are in front of it. Um, and this is also where I like to make sure that everything is named the same. The name of the f column in the database is the same as the name of the form element when it goes through the post when it's down here as a uh, HTML element um, and then the variable name that it's created once it's uh, once it's a variable. So keeping all of that the same will keep you sane. It's the best way I have to put that. So all this does is create a query. Um, this doesn't actually run it so let me echo this out just so that I can make sure that it's working. I don't think there's actually a. I don't think there's actually an error. Let's find it. We'll find out if there is in a second. Good. Yeah, I'm not getting an error, so this is good. So an SQL statement actually looks like this: insert into the 
whatever table, list all the columns in whatever order you want, and then submit the values in the same order as the columns. So my first name is going to go into first name here. My last name is going to go into last name. So if I accidentally swap these, I would need to swap these as well. And you can see that these are basically just variables that are getting thrown into here, or values that are getting thrown in. Now this doesn't run the query. What will run the query is this command. Uh, and actually what ends up happening is you need to create a variable for this and it will save the output of this command. My SQLI underscore query. And what we need to tell it is the name of the database connection we're using. That's kind of a common theme with these MySQLI commands. And then th we need to send them the query that we've created. So this is going to be $DBC, comma, dollar $Query. This will actually run whatever it is I type in. There's a little bit of housekeeping that you should always do at the end of this. Move these out a little bit to make them easier to see. And that's you, that you need to, once you're done entering information, you need to tell the computer to close the database connection. This isn't quite as essential in modern day PHP programming because one of the last things that PHP web servers do is it automatically closes every connection that you've made. Um, but this is not always um, beneficial. Uh, if you do it, then the computer is being a little bit more efficient. It has to go through more processing cycles to do it on its own. So this command, mysqli underscore close, all it needs to know is which database connection, and mine is $DBC. So now let's check and see if this runs. What I should be able to do is fill out this form, and that info should show up here under my browse. And just to make sure it's different, let me be somebody else. I'm going to be Bob here for a minute. When I register, good. It registered, it did something. When I go back here, I need to rebrowse, and there's my info. It's being stored in the database. Now I'll show you how to retrieve all this information a little bit later, but for right now, this is the important part. And notice how this one, it was the second one I entered, it became number two. If I come back here and I become Sally, and I re-register, guess what number that one's gonna become? You can do this all day long. Every time somebody fills out your form, you could get literally thousands of rows here. And as long as all of your columns match up with all of your input forms, you're creating databases that are actually collecting info.